The most loved dessert would have to be creme brulee. And what I love about creme brulee is it can be interchangeable with flavours. It doesn't just have to be the classic vanilla bean custard. I'm going to show you my decadent espresso brulees. These are to die for and they're a fantastic dinner party dessert. Now for my recipe, I need 60 millilitres of espresso. Now this capsule has the coffee compressed in it, which means we're going to get a really full bodied barista style coffee, which means we're going to have the true characteristics of the coffee throughout the brulee custard. And then while that's extracting, I can get onto my eggs. So we need six eggs for this and I'll just separate them. I've separated my eggs. Don't throw away the whites. They freeze really well. So next time you want to do a meringue, they're ready to go. And now for the cream. We need to heat the cream up so it's boiling and we need to add our coffee. So 600 millilitres of pure cream. Now the difference between creme brulee and creme caramel is the cream. Creme brulee has cream in it so it's really rich and decadent. And creme caramel, I always use milk for a lighter finish. So we're just going to bring that to the boil. While that's boiling, I'll add my coffee, so 60 millilitres of the espresso into the cream. I love adding that coffee to it and you just sort of see that marbled effect when you twirl it around and it changes into that gorgeous caramel colour. We'll just mix that up. Now keep an eye on that because you don't want it to overflow. We just want it to warm up and get really, really hot. Now in the base of our creme brulees, we need six egg yolks and six tablespoons of caster sugar. Really easy to remember these measurements. So we'll accurately measure four, five, six. And the rest of this I'll be using for our top that's going to be beautiful and crunchy. All right, I'm going to turn this cream and coffee mixture off because that's come to the boil. And before we add it to these eggs, we want to combine the eggs and the sugar together. You don't have to rapidly mix this until it becomes pale and thick. Ideally, we're just dissolving that cast sugar. All right, it's looking good. Now we can add our coffee mixture while it's still hot. And you'd think if you're adding this hot cream mixture to raw eggs, it's going to scramble. But the trick is to constantly stir or whisk this and then pour at the same time. And that'll ensure that it won't curdle or become coffee scrambled eggs. <laughs> this is why creme brulee is also one of the most popular desserts because it's so easy to do. Now this may seem a little bit unusual but I'll add a pinch of salt. The salt's going to bring out the coffee flavour and you just need the smallest amount. We'll just stir it in to dissolve it and now we can feel our ramekins. These are 150 millilitre ramekins and I use six and we're going to fill them just up to the lip. So using my jug bowl, which makes such a difference, we're gonna pour them in very carefully, just like that. The critical part of cooking brulee is the temperature of the oven and how you cook them. This needs to be cooked at 140 degrees for about 25 to 35 minutes or until there's just a little wobble in the center. Also, to ensure that they stay silky smooth, you need to add a little bit of water to the tray, so that's called a bain-marie, and then cover it with foil so we get a nice even colour when they're cooked. are completely cooked, make sure that you take them out of the hot water, the bain-marie, and just allow them to cool on the bench. Once they're room temperature, then you can pop them in the fridge and then let them cool overnight. Or if you're in a bit of a rush, four hours will do the job. You want them to firm up just like this. Don't they look perfect? These are so yummy as is. But we did say we're making brulee, so we want to make that gorgeous toffee finish on the top. So that reserved sugar that we kept from earlier, we're just going to sprinkle about a tablespoon over the top and you want it to be quite even and then just shake it around 
Perfect. And to caramelise the top, a blowtorch works a treat. You can get these from all good homeware stores, even hardware stores. That's where I get mine from now. Also, if you don't want to use one of these, you could put it under a grill, so a really hot grill in the oven. Now, to get that perfect crust, you need to constantly turn the brulee ramekin, but it can be a little bit hot. So be careful and pop it onto a plate and then turn the plate as opposed to the ramekin. Don't have it on a super high heat and you'll get that perfect caramel crust. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to let that stop bubbling away so it does get quite firm. In the meantime, I can brew another coffee because if you can have a coffee brulee, you should pair it with a perfect espresso. Perfect. Coffee is done. Now let's get to the moment of truth, which is breaking that hard, crunchy topping and tasting that coffee custard. Listen to this. That's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to take a little piece on this side. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Perfectly soft, glossy. <laughs> that is delicious. Look, I love every type of brulee, but a coffee brulee is something very unique. It almost cuts through the richness of the cream. I love it. And then to chase it down with a little espresso on the side. Match made in heaven.